Hey CNC peeps, welcome back to CNC with Liberty. We're still working on the name. Today we are going to continue a project I started in my last video. If you saw it, it was my first big CNC project wherein I made my very own tic-tac-toe board. Today we are going to be continuing and making the X's and the O's to play the game. And after that, Julianne and I are gonna have a little bit of fun with some total boat epoxy that we were sent. We're gonna take you along with us today between the carving and the epoxy, share with you what we learned and see how the process goes. IDCwoodcraft.com. Here's the wood we're gonna be doing our X's and O's on today. Now you'll see I started with using our X fasten tape. I thought I was gonna be able to use it for both the surfacing and cutting out the X's and O's, but unfortunately my surfacing bit could not reach. So as you'll see here in a second, I switched to the air weight system to get the surfacing part of my project completed. This is my first time using the air weight system. I'm cutting some gaskets here that will fit around my project to get that airtight hold that we need. Got to put a little uh, weight down on it, and as you can see, it holds tight. I used the touch plate to zero out our Z for the surfacing. And as you can see, it went over smoothly this time and definitely not as many nerves as I used to have. For this project, I need to start with a surfacing tool pass. To do that, I've created a square that's bigger than my project would. And I'm just gonna pick a pocketing tool pass and run that with my one inch surfacing bit to get a nice clean cut. Surfacing went off without a hitch, nice and smooth. For the X's and O's, I wanted to incorporate the epoxy into them as well, so I picked out a font that I liked for both the X and O that gave me enough space to add a good little pocket in here for some color. Gotta blow out all that dust. Now that we've finished up the pockets on the inside, we're gonna cut out the profile of the X. As you can see, it's taken a few passes to go around. It's gonna go all the way down to the spoil board which is why we use the X fasten tape, so as soon as it cuts through, it's not going anywhere. I'm really happy with how this turned out. We're gonna have to take some sanding brushes to it to clean it up before we can apply our epoxy, but for now, let's keep going on the X's and O's. Here it's finished the pockets of all the X's and O's that'll fit on the first piece of wood here, and it's gonna go in and finish the profile cuts. The cut is finished, it's time to clean them up and pop them out to see how they look. As you can see, x fasten tape did its job and I'm having to pop these out with a little screwdriver. Nothing bad, and then we're gonna take a look. We're popping them out. I'm really excited with how these turned out and I've already got ideas flowing around for that epoxy. I'm ready to get these bad boys cleaned up and get to pouring. We're just gonna start off by knocking off all those little burrs and hairs along the edges of the cut. Starting out cleaning these up, we're going to be using a 240 grit sanding brush from idcwoodcraft.com. You can get yours in the description below. And it's already looking so much better. I 
had so much fun sanding down the O's. All I had to do was press it right up against that center hole and it cleaned up the edges perfectly. I've dragged in Julianne for this part. We're gonna be using Total Boat brand epoxy. Garrett had the pleasure of meeting them and getting to chat it up at Workbench Con. Starting with the X's and the O's. We're using their Maker Epoxy by Jess Crow. Right here, we're just gonna mark on the cups where we're gonna start on our epoxy because you wanna make sure you have equal amounts of part one and part two. Here, we're gonna start off by pouring out part one, which is the resin. We've got these nice measuring cups from Total Boat as well. As you can see, they've got all measurements up and down the side, which is how we decided ours. You'll see some bubbles are forming as I pour this out, but don't worry, we will take care of those in a little bit. Here comes part two, that's the hardener. And this stuff is so thick and satisfying to pour. And we just wanna make sure we get the same amount of both before we mix them. Now we're measuring these out beforehand because you don't wanna mix these before you're ready. As soon as you mix the hardener with the resin, your timer starts. You can't play with epoxy without doing some satisfying pours. You wanna make sure you get your cups completely cleared out so you've got equal parts of both the hardener and the resin and just give it a good mix. Now that it's mixed, the timer is set. We've got 20 minutes to make some magic. Again, you're gonna see those bubbles hanging out, but just stay tuned, we'll take care of them. Starting off our colors is gonna be black diamond powder pigments in the color Sauvage. With the kit we're using, we've got these nice little wooden scoopers for our powder. To be honest, they remind me of ores. Look at that, nice pigment. It's giving off a magenta hue, but once we mix it, we'll see what it turns out to be. Mixy, mixy, it's so pretty. Oh my goodness, I am loving this. It's so neat to watch how all of it swirls together. You wanna make sure you get your pigment good and incorporated, and my, look at that shine. And uh, when you're epoxying, make sure you mark which cup had which in it. We uh, had to take a minute to inspect the leftover liquids. And again, you don't wanna mix part A and part B before you are ready, because, I mean, the hardener is gonna harden. Little dribble's fine, nothing a paper towel can't take care of. I'm getting the next bit of resin prepped for our next color. To be honest, it might be my favorite. You guys let me know. Mixing part A and part B, and having a little fun with it. This is another black diamond pigment powder in the color Jungle Green. This one is so sparkly. We ended up using a smaller scoop of pigment this time because of how rich the Savage color turned out. Here we go, jungle green and Savage ready to pour. The moment we've all been waiting for. Drum roll, please. Imagine there's a drum roll. We kind of just went straight into it, pouring it in. We figured out that these popsicle sticks aren't really the best method to get the epoxy into these small spaces. So if you have any suggestions, let us know. We've been told a paintbrush would be a good tool. That is so satisfying watching it back though. Here in a minute, you'll end up seeing how the colors drip together. It's so pretty. 
We did a little switcheroo and started adding opposite colors in, and you can see they start to meld together. I love how you can already see swirling in the green. It was the shiniest by far. We ended up unfolding some paper clips to try and get some of the surfaces leveled out and make sure we got the corners and stuff. It was not the best method. If you care about your surface, you're definitely gonna wanna put something down to protect it. In our case, we did not care, nor did we put anything down, and it definitely stuck. Here's Julianne prepping our third and final color. Let me know which one is your favorite. This one is a black diamond pigment again in the color Turquoise Diamond Effect. And we ended up using this on the O's with our forest green. This was really fun to add some extra swirl into the color mixture there. And then with our leftovers of all three colors, we started to tackle the tic-tac-toe board. We had a lot of fun here just being willy-nilly on where we were putting each color and deciding what colors we wanted to mix and how much. Here I pulled out the paper clip again to add some swirly designs into the two different colors or the color mixtures. You can get as crazy or as subtle as you want. I just wanted a little swoopy swoop, maybe like a beach little view. Some of them I made them bigger on though. And now we're adding in our blue. When we picked these colors, we really didn't have a plan on color matching or design. We just kind of picked our brightest and favorites and hoped for the best. I really like how it ended up turning out, but if you have a better mixture of these that you would have done, better color matching, let me know. Here I dipped the paper clip into the green to kind of swirl some green in between this blue and red flat line. And I think it made a really interesting divider between the colors. Now Julianne, the master of precision, is taking our blue along the edges in our little divot here. I feel like this is very much a, a princess blue. It gives a very snowy vibe. Towards the end, we were running low on all of our colors, so we decided to use the one we had the most of, which was this blue. We didn't plan out our measurements much. We kind of just winged this, and I think that's okay. As you're learning, you kind of got to play it by ear and have fun with it. As you can see, we were down to the last bits of this blue, so we're really making it last here. And fighting that 20 minute time clock of everything set. In. I told you we'd come back to those bubbles later. Here you can see I'm using a torch lighter to lightly brush over the epoxy and it is popping those bubbles on top there. Now I'm still learning the exact methods, how long to heat it and uh, when to, but it definitely got a lot of those bubbles out of the visible space. Don't want to forget that edge here. I feel like this is an Elsa blue. And if you look real close, you can see the bubbles popping. It's like a sizzling pan. So obviously we weren't very careful with our pour and it's time to clean up our project. I've got a couple of different sanding methods here. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna go in and what all I'm gonna use to finish it out, but we'll figure it out as we go. Started off with the palm sander using a 60 grit sandpaper and that took off a bulk of the scrap 
resin, and so on that was on the edges. Here I'm using a piece of grit grip sandpaper. Um, it's a sandpaper I'm testing out. This is the 220 grit, and that just gets a little bit of a finer touch after I've gotten the bulk off. And then I go in for some final polishing details with a 400 grit IDC Woodcraft sanding brush. I am so proud of the final result. Getting to see all of my hard work and design over the last couple weeks come to an end, it looks so good. Here it is, guys, the finished tic-tac-toe board. We've gone through the CNC process and the epoxy. Julianne and I had a lot of fun. It was my first time using epoxy and Total Boat was very easy to work with. We took our time and mixed in some colors and took our creative freedom with each square, making them all different. As you can see with the epoxy in it, you can still sit your X's and O's down in. If you wanna see more of me on the channel, Comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a video. Check out Total Boat Epoxy in the link below and you'll get a discount for your first epoxy project. If you know somebody else who's a beginner in epoxy or CNC like me, share this video with them and we can learn together. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the description below for all the products I've used and I'll see you in the next video. IDCwoodcraft.com.